And our free and open source game, Harvester to the Space Explorer, link in the description, we have a minimap system that's dynamic, that follows the player, that shows you what's happening around the game world. In this video, I'm going to show you an overview of the code structure and explain how all of this works in Godot 3.2. I'll open the game scene where the minimap lies. And first of all, I'm going to show you where they are in the game scene. So you have the map view. That's going to be the viewport that renders the minimap. That's where you see all the icons and that black background in the game, this view. This only renders to a texture or to a viewport, but it does not display it on the screen directly. To do so, we have a texture rect called map display that's in the UI canvas layer. These are the two main elements that show that display the minimap on the screen. But there's a bit more that's happening there, of course. So if I go to the source directory, UI, you'll find a minimap directory that contains the base classes that make the minimap work. So map display, it's the texture that you have in the UI layer. Map view is the minimaps view. And then you have map icon and map sprite that are respectively a resource that just represents a sprite, the icon and the map, and the map sprite that uses this resource. And that's going to be a, a sprite that can move on the map as well. So for example, we use that map sprite class so that you can see the ship moving and same for the enemies, the red triangles on the left side. Regarding these classes, here's how they work with a little class diagram. The map view uses an aggregate of map sprites. So it stores a list of map sprites. It renders to a viewport and map display has a node dependency in that case on the map view and it's going to show that map view on the screen. If I show you the map display node, it has a texture resource, that's a viewport texture, that targets the map view's viewport. This is how you can render a second viewport on the screen, a technique that you can use like we do for the distortion mask view. This is the special effect you have when you shoot and things deform, as you can see. We render a deformed version of the game world on top of the current game and we mask it. We only deform the parts that are in the projectile's trail. With that, let's look at how we add objects to the minimap. So when I press M, you can see the asteroids represented by an icon, the station, the player with the arrow. And so there are a few parts to that. The first thing, if I go to the, uh, let's say the player ship scene and select the player ship, it has a map icon exported variable. This is an instance of the map icon class. That's a resource that stores a texture, a tint color, and a scale. So just some parameters that we use to display our sprite in the minimap. So then uh, all the nodes that can be on the minimap are part of a group called minimap. If I open the asteroid here, same thing. So if I click on it, you will see it has a map icon. And if I click on the um, node groups icon, you will see it's in the minimap group. Then the game is procedurally generated, as you've seen. When I start the game, we get a new map. So we need to dynamically register all these elements, the asteroids, the player ship, the station, in the minimap when we spawn them. And to do so, in the um, world, First, you have three nodes called spawners. Station spawner, pirate spawner, asteroid spawner. And they emit a signal that the game initializer listens to. I'm going to show you that. This is the game initializer script that starts the game, that generates the, the map, or that requests that, at least. And 
when a station, an asteroid or a pirate spawns, a corresponding callback gets called down the script. And for each of these, the game initializer is going to emit a generic event or a generic signal node spawned. It can be the pirate, the station, the player, just saying the random map generation spawned something. This allows us to also um, make that happen dynamically. If we regenerate the map or later we want to generate the map as you explore space to make it maybe infinite. And so that signal is going to say, okay, there's something that spawned. Uh, whatever wants to look at it, you can handle it. Note that we emit that signal through an autoload, an autoloaded node called events. This is a script that's an event bus. It emits events or signals about things that happen in the game world. And it helps us to uh, loosen the coupling a bit in the game to make it a bit more flexible. It can be a bit of a pain otherwise to get the signals to connect well between two nodes in Godot. So we use that for some of our signals. Anyway, the node spawn signal connects to the map view. So I'm going to open the map view script, close the other tabs. And <clears throat> when it receives the node spawn uh, signal, it first checks that the spawn node is in the minimap. You might want to add objects that shouldn't be on the minimap. Let's say right now we have one icon per asteroid. Maybe later we'll want to signal an asteroid cluster on the map only and not each individual asteroid. In which case you will still spawn the asteroids but only the cluster object would be in the minimap. You get the idea? Anyway, uh, this function then registers the object on the map. So the, the function in question creates a new map sprite object. It's going to place it on the minimap and it's going to call it setup function that stores a reference to a remote transform. Another thing that I should add is that the objects like the uh, player ship or the enemy ship, for example, they have a um, map transform, where is it? Map transform node here that makes it so um, the item on the minimap moves in sync with the player or the pirate. And so the map sprite keeps a reference to that and lets that remote transform control it. Then we take the newly created map sprite and we connect it, we connect it to the node's tree exiting signal. So the node in question, let's say it's the player ship. So when the player ship is exiting the tree, that is when you call Q3 on it, we are going to Q3 the corresponding icon on the map. That way they will be deleted at the end of the same frame normally. And this is how uh, I'm maybe not going to bother showing you in the game, might take a bit of time, but if you completely mine an asteroid like this one, you're going to see it disappear from the minimap when it's completely mined out. You can see it disappeared here on screen and it's not on the map either. So this is um, how you can chain signal callbacks to get that effect to delete the sprites. What else can I show you here? Um, you have a register camera function here that gets called, I think it's by game initializer. So game initializer calls directly into the map view and this duplicates the player ship's camera. So instead of adding the camera to the viewport manually and uh, having to change its properties in the inspector every time we would update the player's camera, we just duplicate the player's camera so that the minimap follows it. So that's why the camera uh, also follows the player right now. And lastly, I can show you maybe in the remote scene tree, going to make the game always on top, open the remote scene tree and you will see that. So in the world, the spawners spawn lists of asteroids. You have the pirates and you have the player and the station and the station spawner. And in the map view, 
I go down to the viewport and the sprites container, you will see a long list of map sprites. These are the ones you see uh, here in the map view with the black background. And each of these is a proxy that's connected to the corresponding object in the game world through the remote transform 2D that I mentioned. Last but not least, what do we have missing? Uh, the camera is a copy of the player's camera. So that camera can be uh, important to... Um, you can see how we uh, scale both cameras in synchronization, right? And they are both animated that way. So it ha they both have the same twin node. Um, yeah, maybe we don't have to duplicate the camera anymore. I mean, we've updated the code lately, so I think that this part is not necessary. Oh, one thing that's important I should mention, in that map view, viewport, we have a canvas layer with a black background, and this ensures that you always have the black background taking the entire screen, more or less, in that viewport. And the last thing I want to show, there's, so it's in the event singleton, we have a global event to um, toggle the map. So a signal called map toggle. I'm going to search it through the project. And you can see, so the map display emits it when you toggle the map. So when you call that toggle function, when you press the M key, it emits map toggle with some information. And in the player's camera script, we connect to that so that when we toggle the map, we can synchronize the animation with that of the minimap. And it's done through the use of these twin nodes. Which does it for the minimap system, I think, for this overview. I invite you to ask any question in the comments if you have. Also, more importantly, to go check the game's code for the details. The link is in the description below and the project is completely free and open source. I'll do more overview videos like these. Please feel free to request uh, topics as long as this is something that we have in the game. But with that, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.